Alright, what is going on, my wonderful people? We're gonna be here to talk about some very uh, variety of topics right now because I figure there has been enough of just solely Persona 4 Arena lately. I was hoping I would have time over the weekend to play a couple other things, and unfortunately, that was an incorrect assumption, and so I don't I don't have anything else. I just have a few more Persona 4 Arena videos. So I'm gonna split that up a bit, hopefully, you know, do some other things, but we'll see. Um, so... The first thing to talk about is obviously, not obviously, the first thing I'm going to talk about <laughs> is my PlayStation 3 stick. Now, for those of you that may be unaware, my PS3 stick died a while ago, which is why I have been playing the Xbox version of Persona 4 Arena. And so, when one of you suggested on that video a while back, hey, why don't you contact ADARC? I did do that. Um, after I finished recording that video, I went straight back to ADARC's website and was like, okay, let's... You know, let's submit a little form that I can uh, tell them what, explain what happened, see if they can do anything about it. Because ultimately, it's one of those situations where, like, it's a long shot. You know, the stick is. I went back, I found out it's from two. I bought it in October of 2011, so it's a pretty old stick. Chances are they have improved their features since then, and they don't. You know, they wouldn't be able to fix it because their sticks use newer stuff, and mine uses older stuff. And that is in, that did uh, end up being what happened after a little bit of back and forth figuring things out. But they did offer me a $40 off coupon for any purchase over $100 on their website. And so, I, you know, now that Guilty Gear Exard has an official release date of December 16th rather than the placeholder date of, you know, sometime before 2014 is over, I know, you know, I'm not going to need a PS4 stick until... December 16th. That's two months away. That's plenty of time to, you know, pick up an extra shift here or there to afford another uh, arcade stick. And so I was like, you know what, man? ADARC is cool peoples. I've never heard anything good about them. I mean, <laughs> that was a... I've never heard anything bad about them. I've only heard good things about them. Whoops! And, um... So, you know, th those are the kind of companies that I like. I like to support those kind of people, the people that do care about, you know, retaining customer loyalty that aren't just like, oh, well, too bad, you're shit out of luck. They're like, hey, no, you you are our customer, you were kind enough to buy our product, let's see what we can do to help you. And that's what they did. And so that, obviously, somebody who treats me that way is somebody that I am going to want to continue getting products from in the first place. So I actually, I ended up buying a PS3-only stick from them. Uh, it's the Q2 Glow, I think. I, I'm not actually sure what the q3 q4 etc what all that is but it's it's the glow stick i just got that that never registered before that it's a glow stick that's funny but i bought that one it looks very slick and hey now i'll have a ps3 stick it has not been delivered yet i'm not sure because unfortunately I, I ordered it late friday night so you know Weekend, business days, blah, blah, blah. It hasn't been shipped yet, but I'm hoping once it, it, do, it will get shipped soon and it'll be here by either the end of this week or early next week and then I'll be able to hop back onto the PS3 games. Crossing my fingers. So just letting y'all get a status update on that. So, let's change the song for a new topic. Blaze Blue Chrono Phantasma 2.0. Now I, as an individual, believe if you were wrong about something... Just man up and admit it. I was wrong in my assumptions surrounding Overdrive Raid. I thought it would be more like X Factor Guard Cancel, which is basically you do it and then you can immediately do something. There's no recovery after the Guard Cancel, you just do something immediately. So it's basically a free punish if you use it properly, unless the other person also X Factor cancels their normal. Overdrive Raid is not that manner of... Thing. It's just it you, you there's a mandatory period of recovery after using it. I'm not sure how long it is But it is long enough that basically you're not going to be doing what I assumed it would be useful for which is basically destroying anything That uh, has any kind of recovery beyond that of you know, like an a button um, And instead of that because there is that mandatory period of time you basically have to commit to like to whiffing a ridiculously unsafe normal in order to get punished for it, mostly I think it's more a way of just kind of being like, okay, you're pressuring me a lot. How about you stop that? How about you? How about you go away? You know, unless let me be in overdrive for a little bit, so you're a bit scared, and now I can play the game again. That's kind of how I'm seeing it. Now, granted, like I said, there are some places, uh, some normals that 
you can end up forcing to whiff that you can get a huge punish off of. But those are going to be pretty few and far between, and overall it is not as... Uh, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Like, I thought the implications of it would be a lot worse in terms of what you were and were not allowed to do on offense. And so, you know, I got to take that back. You know, it's not going to ruin the game at all. Uh, and so now, really, Blaze Blue Chrono Phantasma 2 is just going to come down to, by the time it gets out here, how much it's going to cost. I mean, obviously, there hasn't even been a console version announced, let alone when it's going to be available. But I'm not going to be buying any more 40 plus dollar updates out of Arc System Works. It's just, it's not worth it to me. Um, you know, like, you look at something like Street Fighter and Blaze Blue, and it's like, you know, Street Fighter offers their customers that have been, again, it comes back to customer loyalty thing. They're rewarding people who have already purchased their game previously that are loyal to their brand. You can download the update for $15 because you already have the disc of a previous version. Versus Arc System Works, which just, it doesn't matter if you have previous versions, you, you pay the same amount no matter what. And obviously, you know, the difference there if you're going to get into, you know, trying to decide why it's there's a different price. Arc System Works is putting their story modes into their games. Now, obviously the issue there, I have said it before, the story mode does nothing for me. I don't care about the story, I'm here for the fighting game mechanics. And so if you're expecting me to pay, like, double the price, just so I have that story mode, which does nothing for me, then I'm not going to pay it. This is how it is, that's how life is. And I really think they would go a long way offering, basically, the game at a discount that did not include the story mode, and then they could have, like, story mode DLC that would end up you know, adding up to the same price so you can buy the game and then download the DLC uh, the story separately. Or you can just buy them both at the same time for the full price. That kind of thing. Something like that. Because I would buy the non-story version of it in a heartbeat to save that little bit of money. Whereas, again, if they're going to do more versions of the game at $40 plus, dollars, it's just it's not worth it for me. And it has nothing to do with like character balance. Or anything because ultimately no matter how I feel about any of the other characters I still have Asriel and Asriel is looking basically I don't really think he got nerfed or buffed I think he's kind of you know some of his things got nerfed a couple other things got buffed so ultimately I would say he's kind of around the same power level but changed so regardless of how I feel about everybody else's balance Asriel is still there and Asriel is still a very strong character um so like I, I don't it's just it's ultimately gonna come down to price and we'll see what happens when it gets there but that's just my own feelings on the matter and let's move along so this is a good song this is a good song oh persona music is good songs man I love persona music um what was the next topic I wanted to talk about I know I wanted to talk about playthroughs but I think there was one other thing that I wanted to talk about a little bit you know what one little thing that I actually kind of wanted to uh, touch on is uh the ai of this game and just kind of just kind of you know i don't really have a point with it but it's just i have been climbing the leaderboards of the golden arena mode which is obviously so important everybody cares about that leaderboard right no they don't i am number four right now i believe on that leaderboard because basically the ai climbed the first 200 floors for me and watching that AI is just so... God, the AI is bad. I mean, it's like, I don't blame... Because it kind of made me think, like, okay. If I was put in charge of coding the AI for this version, of programming the AI for a fighting game, how would I do it? And honestly, I have absolutely no good answer for how I would code, um, like, neutral game, mix-up game that kind of like how would you make an effective ai that can react to what the opponent is doing that isn't just they pressed a button use this invincible thing use invincible move one which is basically what fighting games do now it's the button input reading how do you make an effective neutral game i have no idea i have no answer for that whatsoever but you would at least think 
that you know the easy mode thing to do would be combos because combos are you know there's not there's no diversity in combos you watch anybody play a fighting game and you will see the same combos over and over because there are optimal combos well I mean obviously you have to balance optimal versus realistic uh, execution so a lot of the times you know combos people aren't doing aren't 100% optimal but they're 90% optimal and easier than the 100% optimal one you know you would rather hit an easier combo that does 500 less damage that you can hit 100% of the time versus a combo that does 500 more damage but you can only hit 50% of the time that kind of thing but it would just be you know if this character is going on if they land with this normal based upon the difficulty percentage chance to confirm that one hit into a full combo and to actually do damage but it never does that like the AI has basically that I have seen it essentially will do one normal into a special maybe two normals into a special but like with show it will almost always do a normal hit into his record chain and then it's done that's that and then it tries to do a super after the record chain except you can't do his super after the record chain I believe you can, um, I mean, I know you can do his Awakening Super off of a proper Wrecker Chain. I believe you have to use the B version Ender. Um, I don't think you can do it off the A version, and I believe, that, I don't think you can do it off the SB version, but I haven't tried that. But either way, you can use his Awakened Super at the end of his Wrecker Chains to get some additional damage if you want. But obviously, you lose Knockdown, blah, blah, blah. But the AI never does that. The AI always uses his non-Awakened Super which does not combo off of that it's there's it's not fast enough and so is you know watching this it's like the ai constantly does things that doesn't even work it can't even confirm into a halfway decent combo and that is the easy mode version of ai so like how can you expect a company to try and make like a compelling single player fighting game option if they can't even bother to do the easy mode version of AI and this isn't like a criticism on just Arc System Works this is every fighting game I've ever played none of them do particularly good things in AI it's basically almost always how cheap can we make this and it's you know just watching that and thinking about it it just made me realize like that's why they'll never evolve beyond that now granted fighting games are probably the one thing like that no matter what it will always be a better experience to play it with somebody else whereas there are plenty of other games which you know as a single player experience it is meant for a single player experience it is better as a single player experience and that's how it should be fighting games are the exact opposite basically the best it ever gets is when you are playing somebody else and so you know there's not really very much of a of an urging to like bother trying to make an effective single player experience because they know that's not the audience so I don't I, I don't really I don't know about anything about it I don't have any answers for it but it was just kind of you know like that realization that like this is why they rely on it because they don't even have AI yet that can even do good combos let alone like I would have to say Jin actually in ultimate Mars mode that is the only character I've ever actually seen do like halfway real combos obviously I'm sure they're not anywhere near optimal but he would actually do combos and that's very unique <laughs> for fighting game AI and that's always surprised me was when Jen would do a combo in Unlimited Mars because it was actually a like a pretty real combo and it would end up doing what like 6k hey you okay sorry my puppy came in here and kind of breathing a little hard but she's okay you're okay you're okay she was just playing around. So then, obviously, the next topics. So let's get a new song. It's a little too amped up. Yeah. Like a dragon. Yeah. Man, we're getting into Teddy Circus is good. Playthroughs. Now, I was hoping that throughout this period of time, um, you know, it's been. Obviously, I have, I'm on the 90s now of uploading Persona footage. And ever since then, I've also been doing a variety of other things. When will he quit series, blah, blah, blah. And I was hoping there would at least be some kind of indication of growth from those things in this amount of time. And there really hasn't been. And so I'm going to pull back on the playthroughs a little bit. I'm not really going to be doing them as often. Um, and we'll see how it goes. 
But also, another kind of concern for it is that I went back and I looked, you know, when I was looking into this, I looked at the numbers for, like, Mega Man and the Sonic games. Turns out, Mega Man has actually gotten further copyright things placed on it. I don't know if, like, it just, it took some time for YouTube's copyright system to, like, note to notice this correctly. Or if somebody from Capcom, like, saw that, oh, this person is posting videos that you have visual content for. And then they were like, oh, hey, well, we own the music here, too. So then they put a copyright claim on all the music for all of the Mega Man videos. And now those videos are actually entire. you can't, if you are in Canada or Germany, you can't watch those videos anymore. And so that, like, that scares me. Because who, I mean, obviously, I am a nobody. I am not important. I am also not trying to make money off of these things, which is generally where the copyright stuff comes in, is if you are trying to make money off of somebody else's property. But it's very hazy. It's a very, copyright law in general is a very vague thing. And so who knows what could happen if somebody decides like, hey, let's make an example of this dude, which is how it always happens in copyright law. Like they never actually make any progress on, you know, like stopping, you know, pirating stuff on people's on uh, stopping people from you know like streaming movies or music and shit it's just they fucking slam one person as hard as they possibly can to try and make you know the rest of the world scared and the rest of the world collectively goes eh sucks to be that dude but I'll never be that guy and that's how it always is you know that's how it always is I'll never be that guy until it is you and suddenly shit this is the worst luck of my life I don't want to be that guy I want to be the guy, maybe a fun game to watch, but I sure as hell don't want to be the guy. That's for damn sure, so, you know, I gotta be careful about which, even, even if doing it, like, I may need to, like, research games, like, hey, does this game, does somebody, you know, shit on, does a company that owns this game shit on people who try to play it, like Nintendo. Nintendo was like, I don't know if they're still doing it, but Nintendo was a big example of them coming out and saying, you cannot play our games, we are getting all the money that you, of videos that you post, we get everything. Fuck you guys, we don't care that you're advertising our game. We get everything from it. And so, um, you know, companies like that, they're fucking scary to post games of because you never know how they'll react. You never, you never know what they'll do in order to kind of, you know, like, either get it to stop or just scare people. You never know, and like, that, that, that shit does scare me because that is something that can ruin a life. If, you know, you have the full weight of, like, a pretty big company bearing down on you as an individual, it doesn't really have anything. <laughs> and it's a scary prospect. So, like, i am actually been considering just pulling down the Mega Man playthrough because I don't want any trouble with that and I just don't give a shit about dealing with that kind of thing. So, we'll see. So, now... Now I'm trying to think what else is there. I'm trying I, I just want to try and figure out if there's anything else I wanted to talk about, but there isn't really. Mostly at this point is just, you know, I've been kind of for a little bit now been trying to think, you know, maybe I should just focus solely on fighting games and just expand what I do on fighting games. You know, actually dive headfirst into doing a variety of character tutorials, doing a variety of game tutorials, that kind of thing. Um, do more like, I guess, themed shit for online video, so it's not just, you know, like, me playing online and trying to learn a character. Like, for instance, one thing I actually thought of, and I did for a little bit, uh, but not enough, I didn't find enough matches to actually make a full video out of it, so I, it didn't end up going anywhere. But, um, pick, there's an achievement in this game for playing against the shadow version of your own character. So basically spending a day where I'm just, you know, in a lobby and I just play the shadow version of everybody's character. Now granted, you won't be seeing any kind of amazing gameplay, but hopefully I'll be able to make it fun in some capacity. You know, I think of, I think of something. Um, but yeah, like just picking the shadow characters of everybody. Obviously, I'm not the best player with my own characters as it is right now, so I can't really be expected to do anything particularly amazing with the other characters. But it's still, you know, it's be a fun little thing to do. That, but doing that kind of stuff, mixing it up a bit. Not just doing uh, online videos where I'm only picking Ken or only picking Show or you know whoever I'm going with, that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm, it's just you know the thoughts of what can I do 
to not make this like a complete waste of time really ultimately that's kind of what it comes down to you know where can i best spend my time and how can i best spend my time in order to bring like the best entertainment for this channel and also to get this channel to grow and ultimately it's kind of one of those things where it's like i kind of have two options i can continue to truck along and just you know hope that I continue, you know, the subscribers continue trickling in until finally, you know, that trickle becomes a flood, etc., etc. Or I can do that kind of like clickbaiting shit that a lot of other people do to kind of like get started, which is kind of, I mean, you know, you can hate on it all you want, but if it works, it fucking works. You know, you try to do, you try to kind of do something like have kind of extreme titles that barely fit, but not really. Like, for instance, one of my, let me actually just go hop in here really quickly. What, but one of my most watched videos of all time was a basically just a video that just a little video that I thought would be amusing. Um, it was my wow. It re that is actually the third most viewed. Also very disliked. <laughs> um, they obviously didn't get that it was a troll video. I did a something early on in Vanilla Marvel. Basically, I posted up is like a basic zero combo and then i also added to that plus the best sogenmu combos ever in all caps it was very sarcastic they were obviously not the best sogenmu combos but at the time i was very amused by the fact that you could kill people completely just using his projectiles in sogenmu and that was an entirely valid thing so i just did a little combo video with that and that to this date has tw almost twenty-seven thousand hits with, which obviously is not a huge amount, but it's a much larger amount than I usually get. But it also has 28 likes and 20 dislikes. <laughs> it's a pretty bad ratio. Versus, you know, like the one that actually has the best like versus dislike ratio, which was a Fallout New Vegas uh, video of mine, which has 389 likes versus 25. So, like, you know, it's a very... But then, you know, you look at the rest of... Just if, ignoring the stuff that I did for other videos... Uh, just looking at fighting game things. The second most watched fighting game video of mine was an early, another early Marvel video for Wolverine Berserker Charge combos. Um, a video I did, just a little short video I did in CS of Tager going through Makoto's distortions. The next one was my beginner's guide to Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Basic Wolverine combos. Iron Fist Basics. Nova Basics, Zero Basics, more Wolverine combos, Hawkeye, Frank West, Hulk, and then finally, after all of that, there's a video, there's a Marvel video from the only way to play online. And so it's like, you know, look, every single one of those, and then here we go, t three more down, there's one other online video, and then after that, Firebrand's X Factor Infinite, and then after that, Dear Capcom, Wesker is retarded get that sensation but that's what I'm talking about that kind of thing that was a pretty sensationalist title obviously Wesker is not like a huge problem I just I thought it was just you know at the time and I still think it's kind of stupid that um he gets the glass he gets the random glasses buff slash debuff if he's wearing them and I thought you know like if you're gonna make a character like this just make the character always have that like whatever who cares don't be giving them some gimmicky options but um so yeah, like, but easily, the majority of the videos that have actually gotten noticed, gotten things, have been, like, knowledgeable stuff. Stuff that helps people versus me just randomly playing online. So I think the best way to grow would just be to continue doing those kinds of things. Except the problem is, the problem with these games is that, you know, Blaze Blue, it's been out, it ha Chrono Phantasma had been out for almost six months in the arcade before the console version ever dropped more than enough time for everybody to figure out combos and to the point where combo videos from me are going to be useless. This game has also been out in arcades for ages. Came out in Japan a month earlier and I didn't get the import. There's no point in me bothering to try to do any kind of combo videos with this game cuz I mean firstly I'm not a, I am not the kind of person that can figure out like optimal combos. I can kind of I can generally get about like 75% of the way there and then there's always something weird that I never would have thought of that's also part of the combos. Um and so, like, for instance, actually, one of them would be in this game for show. 
you can in one of his combos you can do that uh, the high speed movement cancel into two more Rekka hits. I would never think of using the high speed cancel. That's just not something that I would think of. And so I would, like I said, I'd get about, that's about 80% of the way to an optimal combo, but you don't have the high speed cancel followed by two more moves. You would just do one more move. And that's that. Um, so I know, you know, like, the only combo videos I would end up doing would be stuff I, other people have already discovered anyway, which is kind of pointless. So, I just, I don't know, but... I'm definitely trying to kind of analyze, you know, what can I do to best get the necessary audience to continue moving on up, basically. So we'll see. But either way, that that's that's the end of this. I don't want to keep it here forever. So, you know, obviously, if you guys, I'll start keeping like a notepad file of things y'all have requested me to talk about. And I'll try to make this kind of thing a weekly thing. So at least once a week, you'll get one of these little kind of, I guess, almost podcast options change the wandering wolf for the end and so you know you'll have the ability oh actually one thing I meant to change here was actually let's bring all of this down just a teensy little bit actually more oops I'm gonna bring this up just a little bit because when I rewatched one of them it seemed like the music couldn't really hear it but everything else was pretty loud we'll see if that fixes anything um yeah, so that's that. If you guys, you know, like I said, I'll start keeping a notepad file of any kind of, like, requested topics that you guys have put out so then I can just have that organized so I won't be sitting here in the future being like, what else? Do, do I have anything else to talk about? I don't know. I'll, just, I'll have a notepad file right there and I'll know if I have anything else to talk about. So, thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.